From all you moonshiners, if you want to hear about the kind of bull that they serve around here, made a way back in top of them. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm George, and we are now in the lab. Uh, yeah, I just put a white table in the shop, and now it's my lab. Uh, here's what I've got for you today. Oh, by the way, please you know, make sure you subscribe, and, and I do answer. Um, and the way I do that is uh, on all your comments, uh, I'll, I'll go read through them. Some of them, I mean, they're, you don't require a, a verbal response, so I just hit like. Uh, so I like all the comments, uh, good or bad. Um, those who have questions, I do respond with an answer, so I, I answer those. I spend every morning doing that, uh, and then I spend the rest of the day on the phone. But aside from that, uh, on our recent trip to Scotland, uh, my wife fell in love with a, uh, phew, a rhubarb ginger gin, and uh, I promised her I'd make that because uh, I told her it cannot be that difficult. Now, the beauty about our science and our history and our community is that we get to experiment and um, we come up with some great concoctions and we're almost always successful. There are times when we blow it and we'll share that. Uh, but this is one of those times when we were very successful. So here's what I did. Uh, we came back and immediately I ran gin. So this was just a hundred and uh, this was 95% alcohol by volume. Straight gin. I ran it with juniper berries in the, uh, in the, in the column. Uh, and it came out it is an exquisite gin. But, you know, what do you do with gin? Uh, you either consume gin by itself or you do something with it. Now, as we've discussed on many, many occasions, is that a lot of, almost all flavoring is achieved, it, it, with this exception, because juniper berries are in the vapor flow. Um, coffee works well. I mean, things like that that have a really acidic or a real concentrated flavor profile, uh, you can distill through them and carry a, almost all of that flavor. Um, and others um, that are not acidic and or concentrated or have that profile that carries over, um, all of those flavors are introduced by infusion. And in almost, all, I'd say probably 80% of, the, no, probably 90% of the cases, they're always infused after the distillation process, such as orange vodka, uh, pineapple gin, um, banana gin, banana vodka, I mean, uh, strawberry. I mean, all those things are infused after the process, so please don't get confused. Um, and my point is, is that, and I get this all the time as well, is that, well, if I ferment apples and distill the apple mash, I'm going to get uh, apple shine. Well, you'll have a spirit that has a, an apple character to it, but not necessarily an apple flavor. Follow me so far? Once you introduce some apple flavor, it will be highly pronounced as opposed to just running a neutral spirit. And when you run a neutral spirit, there's no flavor. And then you introduce the apples afterwards. You'll, you'll, you'll kind of, if you had them side by side, you could tell the difference. Uh, so, and last but not least on this point is that the real definition of a neutral spirit is a balanced pH. So keep that in mind. All right, let me set that aside, because what I did, see, I have this as a half-gallon jar, uh, or about 2,000 milliliters, uh, <clears throat> two full quarts. Uh, so what I did was I got some rhubarb, and somebody's going to write in and ask me, or call, like, George, how much rhubarb did you use? This much. You see that? They're all cut up in cubes. I filled the jar just about to here. For those who really, really need it, I use 24 ounces. Uh, that's uh, 680 grams. And so I placed those in the jar, and I took my cut gin that I brought. I cut down to 41% alcohol by volume, which is what 82 proof. I introduced that in here. I also introduced some ginger. Now, it, for those of you, this is what a ginger root looks like, and ginger is very, very complex and very uh, 
oh, it, it, it's got a lot of flavor, and it, it's really, you can smell it, you can taste it. Um, and I just cut off some slivers. You don't have to do anything else to it. You don't even have to peel it. So I cut off eight slivers and shot those in there. And then I took a cup, what's that? Oh, 128 grams of sugar and poured the sugar in there. Now, put the lid on it. I gave it a good shake and I allowed it to set. Now, it's set for the first day, and then every day that I saw it after that, you know, the sugar is going to sink to the bottom. Then I shook it up again, and I shook it up again. And after about five days, there was no more sugar. Now, the sugar acts as a catalyst and a carrier for all of that flavor that's inside of the rhubarb and that ginger, and it infuses it into the gin. And it's an amazing process. I allowed that to set for ooh, about 20 days. Um, I've got it to the point now to where I, I te just tested it. I poured some in a glass, added some tonic water. I offered it to my wife, and she loved it. So we have successfully made rhubarb ginger gin. And uh, this, will, this will last us a while, but it looks like I'm going to have to make this again. Now, the next step of this is to strain this into a couple of these bottles. And this is just, this is a flint, uh, gosh, I can't remember, I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact name, but it's a flint style uh, moonshine jug. And it's got a really neat cap on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a couple of these and I'm gonna transfer this into here and then have this set. Um, of course, I'll make my own little label and uh, set this up on the shelf for the wife. And I have just become a hero in this household. Imagine that. Now you uh, can do the same thing. Uh, try your luck with other fruits or other bases uh, and make your own unique gin or vodka. Um, and, and just try your hand at it. Um, please don't ask me for a bunch of different recipes because I'm just going to do the same thing you're going to do. I'm going to experiment. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try different things. I'm gonna do some research. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test and see what I can come up with on small, small batches, and then, then I'm gonna make a large one. So, uh, that's the way you go about that. So, but make sure you, of course, remember, comment, send me an email, give me a call. Uh, we answer, uh, we respond. Uh, if nothing else, we're going to at least like your comment. Uh, so, uh, that saves me a lot of time because I'll get sometimes 40 or 50 at a time and I need to get through those uh, sometimes as quickly as I can uh, to make myself available for the ringing phone. Uh, hmm. You know it. Happy distilling.